This is Sound and Vision from KEXP. I'm Emily Fox. Lonnie Holly is a visual artist whose work has been on display at the White House and the Smithsonian. He started releasing music about a decade ago when he was in his 60s. He's now out with his seventh album. It's called Oh Me, Oh My and features collaborations with Michael Stipe of R.E.M. Oh me. Oh my. Bonnie Iver. Push. Push. Push, little baby. Sharon Van Etten and more. But none of us have. I caught up with Lonnie Holly to have him share his life story and talk about his song called Mount Megs, also known as the Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children, of which he actually attended. He talked about what his time was like there. Mount Megs, Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children. 64, they let me go. They let me go from Mount Megs, Alabama, in 1964. But with some cuts and bruises that I would never forget. Alabama Industrial School. It was a horrible experience. It was an experience that I wouldn't wish upon no child, no animal, or no, no cruelty. How would I? Re- describe the conditions of Mount Meigs, Alabama. They was the toils and tribulations that most of our ancestors sung about in the Bible. The whippings and the abuses from verbal language that no one would have their children encounter. They were times when we was made to work all day and get the water pulled out in front of us because we didn't get our quota from the labor that we were supposed to have been doing. And what kind of labor was it? Like in the picking fields? Picking cotton and picking up different vegetables and pulling potatoes out of the ground and horn and flat weed and grass and chopping tall grasses and fields and working the grasses off around the growing plants. And the dangerous thing to do was to chop. If you're chopping cotton and you mess around there and didn't know how to chop cotton, you'll chop too much cotton away and you'll get a whooping for that. You got whoopings for leaving too much grass around the plants. You got a whooping for not doing what was ordered to be done. So you got punished for these things. The hardship that the children was going through, children after children after children, picking cotton, toting those bales, bending our backs. Going up and down the ditches and the creeks, flat weeding. And how did you end up at Mount Max? I ended up there because of being caught out after curfew. I were living out near the fairground in Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up at the state fairground after being taken away from my mother at the age of one and a half. By this woman, she was the burlet dancer at the fair, and she was going from carnival to carnival. You know, the state fairground went from county to county, and they sat up and they, they called them carnivals. And uh, I was traveling like that, and I look at that and I say, "Wow, I did take in an awful lot. I took in an awful lot uh, as a child." Some of these things make me get tears all all up and I have to think about them. Uh, This woman had took me away from my mother and she told my mother that she was going to take me and help because mama just had had a baby. And your mom had 27 kids, is that right? Out of 32 pregnancies. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and 
I'm the seventh of her 27 children. And again, I look at my life as a, in a puzzling manner for one thing, very puzzling because of what all I had to go through. But because of what I had already went through and Mount Meg didn't know nothing about me getting hit by a car when I was seven and a half and drug up underneath the car for three and a half blocks and stayed unconscious for two and a half, no, three and a half months. And brain damage, body all broken up in cast, and they had considered me to be brain dead. And then in that process of redeveloping, I had to continue to relearn. I had to re reestablish myself. I had to re uh, put myself in a reorder of life. That's what I had to do. And in, in, in Alabama Industrial School, I was getting whooped every day and beat on top of a few years ago being almost killed to death underneath of a car. And the system didn't know nothing about it. So the system would just send you down. They would just put you into these institutions and not knowing your mental order. They wasn't really, really caring about your physical being. You was nothing to them, but you was treated like creatures or animals. And that's what we were treated like. Only going one way down the road and making sure that you kept that road. It was Lonnie Holly sharing his life story and his experience at the Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children, also known as Mount Meg's. Here's a portion of the song off his latest album called Mount Meg's. Mount Meg's, Alabama. Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children. We didn't get no scholarship. We didn't get no graduate degree, but all of that information is still within me. All of that information. At 71 years old, and I still think of the day, the days and days and days and more days on top of the days. Picture me being there. Picture me being there in Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children. That was Sound and Vision. And now's the point of the show where I ask a little favor that goes a really long way. KEXP is a publicly funded station. We don't pay big marketing dollars to get this show across the finish line to make it happen. KEXP relies on listener support. And you can help support the show financially by giving a one-time $20 donation at kexp.org slash sound. Or you can help spread the word about this show for free. You can do that by subscribing to this show, by rating it, and reviewing it. Those little things go a really, really long way. And just general word of mouth. Let a friend know about this show if you like it. Share an episode with a friend. Again, those little things go a long way in this very saturated podcast world that we live in. If you do that, it just takes a few minutes of your time, and I would appreciate it so greatly. But most of all, thank you so much for listening.